Hey, I found your hard drive with fish photos on it. Thanks to Bellroy for sponsoring this video. Check this thing out. It looks pretty cool, right? Well, it's allowed me to replace all of these random hard drives and store all of my data in one single place. I can also use it to back up my MacBook over Wi-Fi, safely access my data from anywhere on the planet, and drag and drop files between all the computers on my Wi-Fi network, regardless of if it's a Mac or PC. I've also saved a small fortune because I no longer have to pay for expensive Google Drive or Dropbox plans. Now, going back to that cheap little external hard drive, you know, the one my cat currently uses, it probably contains all of your important information and probably the last 10 years of memories in the form of photos and videos. Sounds convenient, right? Well, the bad news is every drive will fail at some point or you could lose it or break it, which means you can lose everything if you're not properly prepared. Plus, if you ever need more storage space, you're probably going to end up with a collection of random drives spread across your entire house. Now, if you're using cloud storage like Google Drive, that can get expensive real quick, and not to mention the security and privacy risks of having your photos and files stored with companies known for selling your personal data. Now, if you're someone who takes a lot of photos or videos on vacation, or likes to download and store your own movies, or even just has a lot of devices that you need to back up, a proper storage solution is essential. And in this video, I'm going to be exploring how a NAS or network attached storage device will streamline and improve your life, as well as protect your important data. So first of all, what is a NAS and why is it important? Well, skipping all of the technical jargon, a NAS is essentially an enclosure with a couple of hard drives inside it that you can then connect to your computer via an ethernet cable or via your Wi-Fi network. Yes, this does mean you can back up your desktop or laptop wirelessly, and you can also transfer and drag and drop files easily between computers, no matter if it's a Mac OS or a Windows computer. Now, there are two main advantages to having a NAS. Firstly, if a drive does fail, there is redundancy and protection built into the NAS system, so you won't actually lose any data, but this is something I'll talk about a little bit later on. Secondly, it allows you to scale your storage amount depending on your needs. For example, if you only need two terabytes of storage, you can do that. Or if you're like me, you can go for a 96 terabyte NAS that will hold tons of video footage. But this is just one example out of many different configurations. Now, before we get into my personal NAS setup that allows me to edit 4K footage in real time, a quick word from our sponsor, Bellroy. Bellroy is an Australian-based company focused on creating functional, sustainable, and quality products. They create and sell a bunch of cool things such as laptop sleeves, tech organization kits, wallets, bags, and more. Check out some of our favorites. A tech kit that helps you organize your tech accessories, a high quality water resistant MacBook or iPad sleeve with microfiber lining, and a desk pouch to keep all your frequently used accessories in one convenient place. Bellroy is a certified B Corp with a big focus on the environment, using sustainable materials and supporting charities. Use the link in the description down below to get 10% off your next purchase. Now in this video, I wanted to mainly talk about my particular NAS setup and how you can make your own relatively inexpensive version of your own NAS. 
Now I have here a Synology DS1621 Plus. This is a NAS enclosure. As you can see, it can take up to six hard drives. And guys, full disclosure, I did receive this from Synology for free. I reached out to them last year to see if they could send me this model. However, this video is in no way sponsored or influenced by Synology. All the opinions are entirely my own. Now, the reason I went for a machine like this is I wanted a really fast NAS to be able to actually edit 4K footage off in real time. I also wanted protection against drives failing, so I set up a RAID, which stands for Redundant Array of Inexpensive Discs. It boils down to if one of the discs in this machine fails or stops working, I won't lose any data. I can simply remove that disc, replace it with a new one, and the NAS software will rebuild the RAID array, and I can continue on using it. This also extends to increasing the storage capacity of this NAS. If I want to add additional drives, right now I have four, I've got an option to add another two drives to increase my storage capacity. Now you don't have to go for a six bay version, you can go for a two, four, six, eight, even up to 12, some are even bigger than that as well. You don't have to go for Synology either. There are other NAS providers and manufacturers out there, but this six bay NAS was sort of a good middle ground for my needs. Now, what I really liked about Synology, what made me actually reach out to them personally in the first place was their user-friendly interface called Disk Station Manager or DSM. And that allows even the most noobish users to set up and configure their own NAS easily. Now, if you're interested in a really in-depth video on this particular NAS, how I set it up, how I upgraded it to actually be able to edit 4K footage in real time, do let me know down in the comment section below. So how can you make your own NAS and how expensive can it be? Well, first of all, you need to consider some costs. What happens if you lose all of your data and how upset are you going to be if that happens? Also consider how much you're willing to spend on cloud services like Google Drive or Dropbox over the next five to 10 years to store all of your data. Both Google Drive and Dropbox are around $10 a month or $120 a year, and getting a NAS actually might end up being much cheaper than what you thought. Coming in as an entry level option, you have, for example, the DS218 Play, which is a two disc enclosure. That's gonna cost you around 250 US dollars. And in terms of storage, you can pick up two four terabyte Seagate Ironwolf hard drives for around $95 each. But don't forget, you can go all the way up to an 18 terabyte capacity drive if you need. Now, this is a total of $440 for four terabytes of redundant storage. So if a drive fails, you don't lose data. And four terabytes is double what you get from Dropbox or Google Drive. And you'll save enough money by not using those services to pay for your NAS within two or three years. And yes, you can still access the data on this NAS from anywhere in the world using Synology's software or the other software from other providers if you go with a non-Synology device. Now, if your budget is relatively limited, but you can afford another couple hundred bucks, you can get the latest and greatest DS420 Plus four bay NAS enclosure for about $500. And this just gives you more room to add storage in the future. Now, these entry level setups aren't quite as fast as my custom one here, but you'll be able to do pretty much everything except 4K editing on it. And if you are the type of person that maybe edits a bit of 1080p footage, depending on the footage, you'll probably actually be fine with an entry level NAS for that. So let's move on how you can connect your NAS to your network or your computer directly. So firstly, you can do it via Wi-Fi. You just need to connect an ethernet cable into the back of your NAS and then connect the other end into the back of your Wi-Fi router. Depending on your network, speeds will vary, but I found it very useful for transferring small to medium sized files between my MacBook and my NAS or other computers on the network. Now you might ask why I don't use AirDrop. And yes, while AirDrop is a very similar process, it's just a lot easier to be able to drag and drop files and folders from, for example, the desktop on my MacBook into my NAS and just use the existing file and folder structure I've set up on my NAS. 
Now, if your computer does have an ethernet port, for example, you have an iMac or a Mac mini or a Windows desktop, if you actually connect your computer directly to your network or your modem, you can actually get much higher speeds. This is because the NAS essentially uses the same network cable to transmit data to and from your computer. Now, the second way is via the direct attach method. And as long as your NAS setup is fast enough, you can get some pretty crazy read and write speeds from your NAS. I installed a 10 gigabit ethernet network card in my NAS. And with the addition of a relatively inexpensive adapter for my MacBook, I can have my up to 96 terabytes of storage attached to my computer with a read and write speed of almost 1000 megabytes per second. That is faster than most external SSDs. At the moment, I get between 300 to 400 megabytes per second, but that's because I don't need any faster than that currently. This is great for moving large amounts of files or editing 4K, 6K, and even 8K footage from my NAS in real time. Now, conveniently, the M1 Mac mini can be upgraded to a 10 gigabit ethernet port on the back, and this is gonna allow you to connect your NAS directly to the Mac and get those super fast speeds. But bear in mind, this upgrade does cost extra. It's around 100 US dollars at the time of this video. Now, something I wanted to mention quickly is a saying some of you guys may have heard before, and that saying is three is one, two is none. And this relates to backing up your data. So ideally, it means you should have three different types of redundancy for your data. So for example, this right here is two. So I have everything inside the NAS. If one of those hard drives do end up failing, that's where the second level of redundancy kicks in because I have a RAID array that spreads the data across all of the hard drives. So if I do lose a hard drive, my data is still intact. And then the third level of that is having one of these off-site, so maybe having one of these at my parents' house or backing it up online, such as a cloud-based backup like Synology C2 or Backblaze B2. Now, these are similar to Google Drive and Dropbox, but they're much, much cheaper because they're aimed at simply backing up the data from this machine. It doesn't mean you can necessarily go on and access it like you can on Google Drive. It's only there for a worst case scenario in case this thing goes up in flames or something like that. So that is my NAS setup. Again, if you guys want me to go into a lot greater detail on my specific customized NAS here, do let me know. But I hope I've really conveyed to you guys just how useful one of these machines is especially if you're like me and maybe you do a lot of editing and you have all of this footage, all of these files you need to collate and combine together. A NAS just makes it super, super easy. And now after having a NAS for six months, I really don't see how I can ever go back to my old ways of having 10 different hard drives scattered across the house.